Tonight, COIN continues to follow last week's boil water advisory issued by the city of Portland. E. coli found in three separate tests led to this alert. And we wanted to know why it took hours in some cases for people to get that critical information. Now, the speed of that notification system is just one problem the city ran into. So tonight, we're asking what's being done to fix the issues. Chris Woodard, live in the newsroom after taking those exact questions to the head of emergency management today. Chris? And at this point, there's no questioning the fact that the city needs to do better. They readily admit that. Well, today I learned those fixes are underway. What, if anything, did you learn from Friday? I think we could do a better job of getting the information out a little bit quicker. Across the board, those involved say changes are needed. Well, there are a number of things that we are going to be looking at and working on. When positive E. coli tests required the city to let everyone know they needed to boil their water, the first problem occurred pretty quickly. I learned 200,000 people tried to access the boil area map, and that is what caused the Water Bureau's website to crash. The technology services staff is working on a fix. What happens if the big earthquake comes? It's going to be more than 200,000 people trying to get information from the city. So how do we fix that? When the city leaned on the reverse call alert system to get word out, it took four and a half hours to call 461,000 lines. That's not bad. We think we can do better. What are you doing then to, to try and streamline that? So we're trying to scrub the records that we have. I learned that right now the Bureau's going through those phone lists to make sure they're not wasting time calling multiple lines at the same address. For example, right now they may be wasting time sending the alert recordings to several dozen phone lines all at the same business when they should be making one call and moving on. They also had a problem getting the message out to non-English speakers. They tell me, lesson learned. I can't say this enough. We need to do a better job of making sure that our emergency messages are translated into several languages. So that's a lot of work going on, a lot of solutions that they're working towards, something we'll keep an eye on to make sure changes are actually made. Now, I also asked today about EAS alerts that can go through your TV or radio and alerts like we got during the big snowstorm that went straight to the cell phone or, or landline. Well, those are certainly faster, but I'm told they weren't used in this situation because those can't target just a small area. They would have went countywide to a lot of people that didn't need to know about Portland water. Live in the newsroom, I'm Chris Woodard.